This video is sponsored by REN. The Arctic is generally defined as the area inside of the Arctic Circle, which sits roughly 66 and a half degrees north of the equator. Unlike the Antarctic, which is a continental landmass covered in ice, the Arctic is made up mostly of ocean, capped by a thick layer of sea ice, and also includes peripheral sections of land from various countries. It is this layer of ice that not only provides refuge for some of the world's most iconic wildlife, but offers one of the most striking and poignant examples of climate change, more specifically, the effects of global warming. At over 1,500 pounds, the polar bear is the world's largest terrestrial carnivore, and like many Arctic animals, thrives in the cold and struggles to survive in warmer climates. These animals are often referred to as marine mammals and rely heavily on the sea ice as their hunting ground, where they prey primarily on ringed seals, for whom the ice is also crucial, using it for resting, pupping, and molting. From the same clade, Pinnipedia, the walrus is another gigantic mammal whose migratory patterns are based on the position and availability of the sea ice, where amongst other uses they leave their pups while diving for food. There are countless other species for whom the Arctic sea ice is vitally important, including the mythical-looking narwhal, who hunt underneath it, and the beluga whale, whose territory is being increasingly encroached upon by vessels of many kinds as the sea ice melts away and the navigable passages widen. While the size of these ice caps does naturally fluctuate, both seasonally and over long periods of time, According to NASA, the recent rapid decline cannot be explained by natural variability alone. Rather, it is attributed to the rise in global temperatures, causing the sea ice to melt at unprecedented rates. While the Arctic is certainly the most obvious example of an area suffering the effects of our changing climate, there are many other ways that rising temperatures and more extreme weather are putting the Earth's biodiversity at risk. Before we explore these effects, however, I want to take as concise a look as possible at what exactly is meant by the terms climate change and global warming, what is causing this issue, and ultimately, to what degree are we responsible? The United Nations defines climate change as long-term shifts in temperatures and weather patterns. The concept of climate change is extensive, with the term weather encompassing a wide range of phenomena, including rain, snow, wind, clouds and thunderstorms to name but a few. Global warming on the other hand refers specifically to the rise in global average temperature and is often used to refer to the sharp increase in the last few decades. In addition to creating a long list of serious implications for human beings, this abrupt change in climate is one of the largest problems faced by some of our favorite wildlife for whom adaptation is significantly harder or simply not possible at all. To say that the human effect on climate change is a contentious issue would be an understatement. One of the points that causes the most contention in the argument for human culpability is the fact that Earth's climate has been changing constantly for billions of years, going through periods that are both cooler or warmer than it is today. In fact, it was only 10 to 20,000 years ago that the giant ice sheets that covered a large portion of the Northern Hemisphere during the peak of the last ice age began to recede. Since then, temperatures and sea levels have risen naturally, along with many other naturally occurring changes in climate. Bearing this in mind, why are so many describing our current situation as a crisis and calling for serious immediate action? The human effect on climate change and this urgency can be best understood by exploring two things, the greenhouse effect and the industrial revolution. The greenhouse effect refers to an essential natural process that acts as the Earth's insulation, which is made possible by a layer of gases in the Earth's atmosphere, including carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide, that prevent some of the sun's heat from escaping, keeping the temperature on Earth at a comfortable level. And herein lies the problem. Up until the Industrial Revolution, these gases were mostly produced by naturally occurring processes. However, since the industrial period began in the late 18th century, the levels of greenhouse gases, especially carbon dioxide, have drastically and unnaturally increased, thickening the layer of these gases in the atmosphere and trapping more of the sun's heat, leading to what we now refer to as global warming. While public opinion on climate change differs, one thing is for sure. 
An overwhelming majority of scientists agree. It is humans that are responsible for this sharp increase in greenhouse gas emissions. To quantify this, a 2021 survey published in the Environmental Research Letters Journal reviewed over 88,000 peer-reviewed climate-related studies, of which well over 99% agree that climate change is mainly caused by humans. In addition to certain types of agriculture, deforestation and cement manufacturing, the main culprit in increasing greenhouse gas emissions by quite some margin is the burning of fossil fuels to produce energy, which releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere and is the main driver behind global warming. As individuals, we use this energy for a variety of different things, from taking flights and powering our cars, to heating our homes and cooking our food. While undertaking these activities, the effective amount of carbon dioxide released into the atmosphere is known as our carbon footprint, which is something you can calculate and offset with today's sponsor, REN. REN is a subscription service that enables you to calculate your carbon footprint and then offset it with a range of plans which are super flexible, allowing you to contribute what you can. Once you've signed up, you'll receive monthly updates on where your money is being spent like this Amazon Rainforest Protection Program that uses technology to detect and report illegal deforestation, protecting not only the valuable trees that absorb our CO2 emissions, but the wealth of biodiversity in the Amazon. REN specializes in finding projects like these and specifies in detail why they have chosen each project so you can rest assured your contributions are spent where they're needed the most. If you're thinking about your impact on the planet, Offset your carbon footprint with REN. The first 100 people who sign up using the link in the description will have 10 extra trees planted in their name. Thank you to REN for sponsoring this video. Global warming is the central point of discussion when addressing climate change and has complex and far-reaching implications. But if temperature fluctuations are normal, how do we know that humans are responsible? This graph shows data collected by analyzing ice cores in Antarctica and estimates the Earth's temperature over the last 800,000 years. This graph also uses paleoclimate data to estimate temperature histories for the past 1,500 years, which until recently has been relatively stable. Finally, this graph uses data collected with modern instruments to show changes in global land and ocean temperatures from the late 19th century to 2019, with the most drastic rise in temperatures occurring from around the 1970s to today. We'll come back to this figure at the end of the video. The most recent Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change or IPCC report compiled in 2021 highlighted a list of changes the world is experiencing, all of which have major consequences for both humans and the natural world around us. In terms of effect on biodiversity, one of the most alarming is the impact on coral reefs, which are often referred to as the rainforests of the sea for the amount of biodiversity they support. One of the most important relationships at play is that of the coral itself and microscopic algae, which are the coral's primary source of food and are often responsible for their bright, vibrant color. When the water is too warm or polluted, the algae leaves the coral, causing them to turn white, a process known as bleaching, which makes the coral more susceptible to disease and death. This fact is particularly jarring when you consider that approximately 25% of all marine species depend on coral at some point during their life cycle. In addition to an increase in ocean temperature, the pH of the water is also changing, a concept known as ocean acidification, which relates directly to the increase in levels of atmospheric carbon dioxide which the seawater absorbs. A study by the University of British Columbia found that both temperature and pH have an impact on sponges the primary food source for the critically endangered hawksbill sea turtle. This species is not only affected in the water, but on land as well. In addition to sea level rise compromising their breeding grounds, the sex of their hatchlings is temperature dependent, with eggs that are incubated below 27.7 degrees centigrade producing male hatchlings, and those incubated above 31 degrees producing female hatchlings. If temperature keeps rising, eventually, only female hatchlings will be produced. Moving to land, there are several indicators that suggest that global warming is responsible for the worsening of many natural disasters that can be devastating for both humans and wildlife. 
The IPCC report states that climate change is intensifying the water cycle, making drought more severe in many regions. This has ramifications for many animals, but is magnified for those who need lots of water, such as elephants, who consume upwards of 40 gallons per day. Wildfires are also becoming more frequent, as an increase in global temperatures creates drier conditions that make it easier for fires to start and burn longer. In recent memory, Australia's bushfire crisis in 2019 and 20 killed or displaced over 3 billion animals, the vast majority of which were reptiles, according to a report commissioned by the Worldwide Fund for Nature. Furthermore, a study published in Nature shows over a 30-year period a 350% increase in burned area between the first and second half of the record, and an 800% increase if you include 2019. But it's not just natural disasters that pose a threat. Animals rely on specific climates either to live year-round or to migrate to and from based on seasonal changes. Many scientists and conservationists now believe that some of the Earth's most spectacular migrations, including those of the caribou and the migratory monarch butterfly, could now be at risk. Behavioral changes have also been witnessed in other species, such as baird sandpiper, who are breeding earlier in the season, meaning their chicks cannot feast on the abundance of insects that would usually be present when they are born. In addition, many animal and plant species are adapting their ranges based on the changes to their available habitat. A UC Davis study found that 90% of coastal freshwater turtle species could be affected by sea level rise in the next 80 years due to saltwater intrusion into freshwater habitats. Another area where habitat loss is particularly prevalent is Arctic and Alpine tundra. Many mountainous species of both animals and plants are now moving to higher elevations in search of a cooler climate. One such species is the giant mountain lobelia, which is predicted to lose 96.6% of its suitable habitat in less than 60 years, according to a study published in the National Library of Medicine. In the Arctic, musk oxen, Arctic hares and Arctic foxes are just a handful of species that are highly adapted to this icy region and simply can't exist further south. As temperatures rise and the tundra thaws, we risk the extinction of many of these species. An additional consequence to the thawing of permafrost is the amount of organic carbon stored in the frozen soil. As the permafrost thaws, this carbon breaks down and is converted into carbon dioxide, which is released into the Earth's atmosphere, exacerbating the situation. The points discussed in this short video only touch the surface when it comes to the myriad ways that climate change affects the world around us. So bearing all of this in mind, what is currently being done to combat climate change? On December 12, 2015, the Paris Agreement was adopted by 196 parties at the 2015 United Nations Climate Change Conference. The central aim of this agreement is to strengthen the global response to the threat of climate change by keeping a global temperature rise this century well below 2 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels and to pursue efforts to limit the temperature increase even further to 1.5 degrees Celsius. Like public opinion on climate change in general, the reaction to this agreement is also divided. Some believe this aim to be the most important goal we should be working towards, and others believe these aims to be too costly and or not as important as some of the other issues the world is facing, such as poverty, education, access to healthcare, clean water and sanitation. Unfortunately, neither exploring these viewpoints or discussing the options for combating climate change extensively are within the scope of this video. However, if climate change is an issue that is important to you, there are a few key points that the majority of credible sources all agree on and can be summarized in two categories. Firstly, take steps to become more energy efficient. Work out the areas where your lifestyle has the most impact on the planet and make an effort to reduce. Turn off lights when you leave the room, take more public transport, eat more meat-free meals and use more renewable energy. And secondly, research and vote. The impact of that vote will be different depending on which country you live in. In what areas is your country having the most impact on the planet 
and are there more sustainable solutions that you can vote and or lobby for? The world is an incredible place and with substantial and sustained effort, we can keep it that way. Click here if you'd like to explore the 12 most unique national parks in Europe. Thank you so much for watching.